hello and welcome to Glencoe and in today's video the plan is Buko Etermore So this route we're doing today into Corrie Na Tulloch is usually banked with snow and it's a bit of an avalanche risk in the height of winter However, it's been a pretty poor winter when it comes to snow and there's hardly any up there but I can see there is a cornice and there is some snow coming down the gully so we are a little bit apprehensive till we get up and close and see what it's actually like but from here, I mean, it doesn't look like there's that much snow so yeah, yeah, we've got the spikes, we've got the axe, so should be fine. Ah, just when it been really cold, the path is peppered with little icy spots. Not enough to get any uh, spikes out, but just have to watch your footing. Well, we've got Ben Nevis here, we've got the Mamors, and we've got Kev. I tell you what, folks, as much as I love wild camping, I'm glad I've just got a day pack today Even with the extra winter gear, it's not even that heavy Just used to the old camping packs Would you like camp with it then? Camping daft <laughs> I've not been here since 2014 and then 2009 before that but I'm thinking this path goes round here underneath this wall of crag and then we should be able to miss that snow patch and then top out in the ridge about here. Hey right, folks, remember that cornice I mentioned I could see down from the road? I'm literally right below it now. I think we're going to miss it. Yeah, we got up on the ridge, avoided that snow patch. Happy days, and look at this! Ho ho ho! Yeah, dancer! Right, folks, that wasn't bad at all. That took two hours from car to the top of the quarry, and now we're heading up Stop Jenak. Woohoo! The very first time I came up here, I was in my mid-twenties and I remember getting up to the summit and I was just totally blown away by the view and I'm really looking forward to seeing it again because it's absolutely stunning it just drops obviously you've got like Crowberry Tower, the curved ridge and all that it just drops and then you've got Rannoch Moor right across, it's stunning anyway I'll stop talking about it I'll get up there and I'll show you it <laughs> Hey, happy days. Twelve years on and this view still gives me goosebumps. That's fantastic. Well, as much as we'd love to hang around the summit for a bit we've got this other Munro at the back of the ridge to get, so let's go! Oh. So 
So this next objective here is a Munro top. Don't make the mistake that we nearly did back in 2009. We actually thought that was the Munro and we were coming down and we met two walkers and they actually had to say, you do realise that the, <laughs> the Munro's right at the back of the ridge. You're like, oh no, you're kidding. We were going to go to the King's house for a pint. So uh, aye, on we went. <laughs> Tampons. It's 20 past 11. That's the progress I've made so far. So there's Stop Jerag, come along the ridge here, and just about to head up this bad boy. Shame that this is just a Munro top and the second Munro is that way along that ridge. Got a big drop first though. It's no matter rescue anyway, to be. Okay folks, this here is the second subsidiary Munro top and you might be able just to make it behind me there that is the last proper Munro of the day and we need to retrace our steps back along this ridge Alright, that's us heading for the last Munro now Stop Nabroike, I think it's pronounced I was trying to listen to the little Walk Islands guy there Stop the broke you. That's me back up at the summit. What we did is we dropped down a little bit. It's well worth it, by the way, because if you go down a little bit more, you got a cracking, uninterrupted view right down Glen Etiv, and of course, ultimately, Loch Etiv as well. So, aye, definitely worth just that little drop off. But what a day! Absolutely super boss. Two new Munros in the bag cave. You happy, mate? Yes. Stunning conditions. Beautiful conditions, considering we were going to do a repeat of Ben Doran, so we both had poor weather doing that hill. Uh, I think this is a great second alternative. It's been minted, eh? It's been super bush. Well, that's us grudgingly leaving the Munro, but at least we've got this nice ridge walk, eh, Kev? Yes, yes, I don't want to leave. And then we'll drop back down the other side over here. Mind that time you says to your, your missus that like April, May and June was camping season <laughs> and she's like, aye, I'll be divorce season <laughs> if you keep that chart. <laughs> I'm sure I say that late March to June. Aye, the, the pre midgy <laughs> season, basically. Okay, folks, this cairn marks the descent route, but as you can probably see right in front of me, it is barred by a cornice. So, we're going to have to maybe improvise here. I don't want to get too close to the edge. Whilst that 
is doable, we're going to give it a wide berth and I'll tell you why. That's been in the shade all day, it's covered in frost and it just takes that one wee slip towards the end of the day. So we're taking the most sensible route and there was a cairn marking another descent that's less steep and I think there's a, you can just make out a path that should join up with the original path and get us down a bit more safe. So that is the plan. Right here, you can see here, it's a very small cairn and it's just a little bit less steep, so we're going to head down here. Okay, so we're just about underneath the cornice. Came down there, two other guys coming down behind us. And you can probably just make out the path is here and down. This has been a bit of a slow descent, just it's peppered with ice everywhere. And we're tiptoeing around try to get past the ice and like we're carrying bloody crampons and micro spikes so crampons would probably be overkill because there's a lot of rock so the micro spikes are on hopefully that should make a difference because why slip about like Bambi on ice you can feel a difference already you see I've that cross a bit oh. there's a wee scrambly bit it's just here and there was two guys ahead of us and they were struggling on it I think it's just ice you wouldn't think twice about in summer. So me and Kev admittedly bottled it a little bit and thought, nah, it looks a bit dodgy. He just took a bit of a detour up over those crags, then diagonal down here. And it's just skipped out this dodgy bit. Don't get me wrong, that's easy in summer, but you can just see there's a lot of ice there and the guys were struggling right there. Well that was a slow descent, but that's four o'clock now. Back in the sunshine, happy days. Now we're going to pick up the path back down the glen. Alrighty folks, that's us back on the path, heading out to the car. Got less than two kilometers to go, so it seems like a good time to wrap this up. So thanks for watching, I'll catch you next one. Cheers.